On the tops of trucks, demonstrators lit candles. Others waved the Romanian flag with a communist symbol ripped from the centre. Down with the tyrant, they scrawled, and defaced the flattering portraits of a despotic Elena Ceausescu that used to be everywhere. And earlier this evening, the vast crowd was still there, chanting that they wanted freedom. And in these pictures, which were transmitted live in Romania and around the world, a clear picture of a revolution in progress. I came out of prison an hour ago, this man told the crowd. Dumitru Mazil was one of the signatories of a critical letter to Ceausescu and was imprisoned for it. He's now emerging as one of the new Romania's leaders. He appealed for silence for all those who died in the uprising, almost certainly more than 3,000, and the huge, excited crowd became completely silent. As the crowd waved a Romanian flag, demonstrators seemed to have taken over every balcony around the square, a speaker with an army officer beside him told them Ceausescu and his hated wife had been caught. We got both of them, his family, the whole gang, the speaker said. When that is confirmed, we will announce it and he will be tried in public. That got one of the biggest cheers of the day, but ominously, no speaker actually did return to confirm the dictator's capture. Although the whole tone of this meeting was triumphant, it's clear that the leaders were not confident they were in control. One speaker announced shooting had started again, and he appealed for blood donors. The security police's desperate counter-attack had started again. The other focus for today's celebrating crowds in Bucharest has been the television station, ruthlessly used by Ceausescu for 24 years. There were rumours for most of the day that the security police were planning to retake it and appeals for people to go there to protect it. Go there they did and stayed to sing Romania's national anthem, but now with the old pre-Ceausescu words. Most of the day's events in Bucharest have been shown live on Romanian television. Demonstrators took control of the studios at midday. ITN's Gabi Rado in the neighbouring Hungarian capital Budapest has been watching the broadcasts. At about quarter past eleven this morning, Romanian television suddenly and incredibly showed one of its own studios crowded with dissidents. In the centre, a man quite clearly the leader addressed a stunned nation. I call upon the entire population to go out into the streets, to go to your local government buildings and occupy them without force. We are ordinary men. We are Romanians. We are patriots. Members of the armed forces, many of you know me personally. Do not use your weapons. Do not shoot people. You are Romanians, like all of us. The same heart beats in your breast as in our breast. Next, a dissident poet took the studio floor. Though it didn't look like it, he was appealing to the nation for calm. Then they brought on an army officer. It was the first sign that the establishment itself was crumbling. He called on his fellow soldiers not to fire on citizens and apologized for the actions of the army on previous days. A man appeared next to him holding a bullet. He said it had been taken from the body of a protester during the last five days. Later, senior army officers arrived in the studio. It had been clear for several days that sections of the armed forces had gone over to the protesters. Today, some of the top men changed sides. At one stage, a caption was abruptly superimposed on the screen. It said that water supplies in the towns of Sibiu and Tamashuara had been poisoned. The general assumption was that the Securitate, the secret police, did it. About ten minutes later, there was an urgent message. I don't know how true this information is, but if it is true, it's a massive victory for the people. 
Nikolai and Elena Ceausescu have been caught and they're under arrest in Turgovice. Later, there was confusion about Ceausescu's whereabouts. Tonight, there was an even more remarkable sight. Niku Ceausescu, the dictator's son, was dragged into the studio. Here comes the little princeling, said the commentator. Niku, clearly terrified and with a bruise on his face, used to be the party secretary in Sibiu. He now claims to have tried to stop the Securitate from shooting into crowds there. But tonight, they said the Romanian people would be his judges. All day long, we in Hungary have been watching the revolution taking place across the border. We've not witnessed the terrible suffering of the Romanian people, but because the TV station in Bucharest was liberated early on, we have seen the brave men and women who determined that the outside world should know the truth. Gabi Rado, News at 10, Budapest. Nicolae Ceausescu ruled Romania for 24 years. His downfall marks the end of hardline Stalinist leaders in Eastern Europe. He created a dynasty that pervaded every aspect of government, relying heavily on the hated secret police. News of the unrest in Romania began to reach the West at the weekend. In Timisoara, the army reported to have killed up to 4,000 people. By Wednesday, there were demonstrations in the towns of Arad, Kriaova and Sukeva. Yesterday, at least 20 demonstrators were killed in the capital, Bucharest. And in the northern city of Cluj, another 30 were killed by the security forces. Nikolai Ceausescu created a political machine designed for his own aggrandizement. Those who supported him did so out of fear or self-interest. A tedious speech at last month's party congress received 60 standing ovations. This phony support fooled him into thinking he was loved by the people, but they hated him. They saw him and his family living in splendor, building monuments to themselves, while the masses came close to starvation without the fuel to keep themselves warm in winter. Ceausescu appointed his wife as deputy. She had a sister in the Politburo and a brother as a minister. Their son, Niku, held senior office. Nikolai's brother, Ilya, was in charge of the military. Altogether, 40 family members held privileged positions. He held power through the ruthless repression of the people by means of his security forces, a network of police and spies said to number one in ten of the population. Amongst them was one very special group. Well, his closest bodyguard is composed of a group of people who are sometimes referred to as the orphans of Ceausescu. And they're called this because it's believed that these are a group of children who've actually been raised in special schools, uh, were actually orphans, raised in special schools, whom the Ceausescus have taken a personal interest in, have given presents to, and have uh, developed, if you like, into this personal bodyguard. In addition to this, of course, there are the, the normal Securitate, who are one of the toughest secret police networks uh, in Eastern Europe. If the Ceausescus have left, why are his supporters still fighting? Well, one possibility is really that they're fighting for their own survival. Uh, the Securitate is so unpopular in the, uh, in, the popu in the country as a whole that really their chances of survival after Ceausescu goes are very slim. Uh, so they may be holding on, in some ways, defending areas while some of them can uh, possibly escape. They may also, of course, still be trying to hold back to allow other members of the Ceausescu family uh, to get out of the country or to, to make an escape in some way. Nikolai Ceausescu was born the son of a cobbler 71 years ago. He joined the Communist Party, then outlawed, when he was 14. Jailed during the war, he became a junior minister in the Communist government in 1948. Seven years later, a full member of the Politburo, he rose to be Secretary General of the party in 1965. Always a maverick in the communist world, he refused to support the Soviet invasion of Czechoslovakia in 1968. His anti-Soviet stance bought him the friendship of the West. He was given an honorary knighthood when he visited the Queen in 1978. But politically, he remained a hardline Stalinist. The rigidly centralized economy tottered and faltered. In recent years, he became obsessed with paying off foreign debts and exported most of the country's fuel and food, leaving his people starving. Last year came the ultimate in ill-considered, unpopular plans. He announced that thousands of historic Romanian villages would be bulldozed and replaced by concrete blocks called agro-industrial centers. Dissent grew. 
Yesterday, Ceausescu faced the true feelings of his people for the first time. The fear on his face showed he'd finally understood his tyranny couldn't last. Tonight in Timisoara, the scene of a bloody massacre last weekend, thousands of people have taken to the streets to celebrate Ceausescu's downfall. The first pictures of some of those who died on Sunday have been released by Yugoslav television. Western journalists have now been allowed into Romania. ITN's Penny Marshall and her camera crew were the first to reach Timisoara. The gateway to Timisoara and behind it the town which first dared to challenge President Ceausescu's regime. First the children ran to greet us, bringing us news their parents had just told them. <laughs> Lorries hooted in celebration. Exuberant citizens welcoming us to share their newfound hope. After a week of terror, they talked of liberation. Even the smallest child found voice. ITN was the first television crew to arrive, confirmation for the people that change had really come. At their graveyard, more people were gathering. They claimed some of the victims from the shooting had been buried here in a mass unmarked grave. Now they were digging them up. They claimed this was the proof of their massacre. We saw the bodies of 30 young men, and as these, the poorer people of the town, prayed, they alleged thousands more had been burnt to cover up the atrocity. They said their tears were for those who'd not lived to see this day. As night fell, Timisoara's citizens took to the streets. In what seemed like just a few minutes, thousands had gathered, their singing drowning the memory of gunfire. And out of this political struggle on the balcony, a new reformist group emerged, virgin leaders calling themselves the Romanian Democratic Front. But tonight, the crowds only knew their old enemy. We have no fear, they shouted, proud of their fight, even of their dead. It's very wonderful. We are not afraid of security. <laughs> no, not afraid of security. No. We fight from Saturday night. We fight all the time. Sunday night is with uh, army. And, uh, we, don't, we don't need this because uh, we are not uh, hooligan and... Uh, no fascist! We are no, no fascist. fascist! No hooligan! We are people! We are people! Working. Working people we are! And I want to say to all the world, be with us! Don't let Ceausescu's security kill us! Kill us! It was the army here who eventually gave the people their victory, throwing down their weapons and joining them on Wednesday. Tonight, they were with them on the balcony. And then, joining them, throwing out bread and wine to the jubilant crowds. The last time the people of Timisoara gathered in this square, they were shot at. Tonight, they've come back to claim their victory. There are calls here for political reform, but above all, the feelings of the people behind me are one of enormous relief. The President Ceausescu has gone. Penny Marshall... Across Eastern Europe. Since 1945, the gate has been a symbol of a divided Germany and...